Hey guys, Youngblood with you, and today I wanted to do our Should You Buy video on the new Mirai Fury. First off, I wanted to apologize on the delay for getting this video out. Life has been busy, but we're back to it now. Secondly, what the hell is Mirai? What is a Fury? These are good questions and exactly what we're going to be talking about. Mirai is a subsidiary of Misk, and the Fury is actually two ships that are snub fighters, and by snub, we really mean small, limited ships that are lacking core functionality like quantum drives and jump drives, meaning they have limited range and they have a reliance on other ships to carry them. The good news for both the Fury and the Fury MX is that they are very small ships and are designed to be carried on a variety of not very large ships starting as small as the Freelancer and Cutlass sized. They are both on sale now with LTI for $55 and I'll cut to the chase by saying if you intend to purchase anything else during the sales happening right now, you would probably be best set to buy one of these as an LTI token to upgrade to the ship you actually want. So with that out of the way, let's break these ships down some more. <clears throat> the Fury is a strange looking little ship that kind of reminds me of the Manta from Wing Commander Prophecy. Um, with arms that extend out from the front of the, uh, the sides of the ship towards the front where you either have a series of repeaters or missiles mounted. The reason that I say either is that the Fury takes a page from the Talons book where you have one variant that focuses on guns and another that focuses on missiles. The Fury, the gun version, comes with four size 2 laser repeaters by default along with four size 2 missiles, which is a pretty decent set of weaponry on a snub craft at this price point. The Fury MX, the missile version, has no guns but does come equipped with total, uh, 20 total missiles including 12 size 2s and 8 size 1s. The MX is unable to equip any guns and the base Fury can't add more missile racks from an MX because they are separate variants so you have to choose which one you want or buy both. From a size perspective, the Fury is 7 meters long, 5.4 meters wide, and 2.6 meters tall when in flight mode which makes it about half the size of an arrow in every direction, which you can imagine makes this a very small and hard to hit ship, and also tells the tale of why it's able to fit in so many ships to be transported. To further that story, the ship gets smaller in landing mode, shrinking down to just 6 meters long, 3.8 meters wide, and staying 2.6 meters tall. Mass comes in at just 15,000 uh, kilograms, and it has four pivoting main thrusters similar to the Xi'an Scout, um, which speaks to the partnership with MIT, that MISC has with the GN race. Um, and in addition to those four pivoting main thrusters, you have 12 maneuvering thrusters. Um, those are all in place to try and accomplish the overall goal of quote-unquote unparalleled agility from a ship of this class. Um, but we'll talk about that performance here soon. The cockpit of the Fury is pretty amazing, with a glass bubble and fantastic visibility in almost every direction for a nice experience flying the ship, as well as having a retractable, retractable armored canopy um, to try and add in some additional durability to what's known as a critical part of the ship. The Fury is a small snub, so it does not have a weapons rack on board, but the ship that carries it should have that. Um, no weapons rack, but it does have a small personal storage area. There's also not an ejection seat, and when you consider death mechanics at some point, this thing may start to seem a little bit like a flying coffin. The components on the ship are pretty par for the course for a snub, um, with what I've already mentioned being the most prominent thing to take note of, being the lack of a quantum drive, which is relevant for current state game today, but also no jump ability, so once we do have multiple systems, no jump gate traversing either. Aside from that, you have uh, single small components for the most part, including radar, computer, fuel intake, fuel tank, shield generator, power plants, and you actually have two small coolers, which is good considering the base Fury has four guns on board. So now that we're empowered with that information, let's dive into some comparisons to notable small combat ships in the Gladius and the Arrow. Um, I will remind you that those are full ships and not snubs, so we're not exactly going like for like here, but people are going to be more familiar with these than they are with like the P-72, for example, which is probably actually the best comparison in flight. Um, for what it's worth, the flight performance of the Fury compared to the P-72 is almost identical between the ships from a stats perspective, um, with the Fury doing better with things like reverse acceleration and the P-72 frankly just being faster, um, and it seems to adjust vectors a little bit more effectively. So, against the Gladius and Arrow though, the Fury has marginally better forward acceleration than both, but significantly better, almost twice as good reverse acceleration and braking that allows for better changing of directions. 
um, acceleration up and down are all within the margin of error for these three ships, with the Gladius being slightly better than the other two. And left and right still favoring the Gladius with the arrow just slightly behind, and then you have the Fury being um, a fair amount worse than both of those in lateral strafing. From a boost perspective, the Gladius wins, um, with the Fury and Arrow almost being identical to each other, just a little behind the Gladius. Um, pitch and Yaw, the Gladius is the best of the group, followed by the Arrow, then the Fury. And with Roll, the Fury does the best, followed by the Gladius, and then the Arrow bringing up the rear. None of these ships are really significantly better than the others with a flight model. However, there are differences that may help to determine which is right for you. The top speed of the Fury is 1250 in cruise and 454 in atmosphere, which makes it the fastest of these ships by a little bit. Um, I think when you look at these, I think you have bigger ships that are performing very similarly to the Fury, and I think we kind of expected the Fury to be a little bit more nimble than it is. So I think there's a little bit of expectation shifting that needs to happen in further development. Um... Okay, so aside from the speed, I think the most significant things with these ships would be the size and the durability. From a size perspective, the relatively small Gladius feels like a giant compared to these other two. And what I would normally consider to be the minuscule arrow feels very big compared to the Fury, which uh, means that hitting the Fury is a very real challenge. The small target, though, is a really good thing because much like the Arrow, the Fury only has one shield generator, which proves to be a problem for the Fury. Speaking of that durability, the Fury has very little, like single-digit HP on the thrusters of the ship, which means that any sustained damage to the back of the ship is going to cause real problems because losing a thruster on these ships means that your flight model is now completely broken and is the single biggest issue with this ship. It also means that ballistics, which are now passing through shields even more than before, are the worst single thing to encounter in this ship, except for maybe like an asteroid. Um, and a single round of a decent sized gun will knock an engine out completely. Um, I've also seen that things like turrets and ground vehicles um, don't struggle with these ships. So they really, I mean, it's really a situation where you need to avoid being hit at all costs. Um, overall, the agility isn't quite as promised, but it's not really very bad either. There are allegedly some improvements to the flight model coming in 3.19.1, but what those are, we don't know yet. Another issue with the ship being a snub is the lack of a room on board for significant fuel tanks, meaning that the range is extraordinarily limited and ends up being about a third of what the Gladius holds and is less the more you push the boost. The Fury is an interesting ship that really relies on swarm tactics. Um, and I've seen a number in the teens of people loading Furies into C2s, but the practicality of deploying them is certainly in question. Um, there's also the lack of a launch ability like a P-52 launching from a constellation, so deploying these ships while in flight seems like a real chore and probably dangerous for almost everybody involved. Uh, these are going to be best suited for ships like a Liberator, where there's like the landing pads, making a small swarm carrier, or even at a larger, more obscure um, scale would be the, uh, like the Kraken. Um, and it could really kind of be a scary proposition, depending on how many of these you have on board. Now, I think there's a lot of people that will try to cram these into their freelancers or even constellations, and while that technically should work fine, I don't really see that, in personal opinion here, as being the real intended purpose of this ship um, and how effective it is to use them in that manner is probably in question. You know, I would much prefer to have someone in a turret and how effective it is um, is probably going to be better overall. But that's really more for you to decide just because the way that turret changes have been, it, it just seems like things perform better and you're more safe and secure, although you're not dividing and conquering. So it's kind of a way your options thing. When we look at should you buy a Fury, my answer would be no, aside from the use case of an LTI token. Um, this ship will be cheap in the game to buy once it's available next patch, and there are full-size ships that offer a lot more than this one does. Um, if you are a person who's only looking for one ship anyways, this is definitely not the ship for you because it doesn't have a quantum drive, and if you already have a combat ship, you probably have something that's capable of putting something out that's similar to what this can do. Now, if you want to make a mini carrier and that's the gameplay you're looking for, then by all means, pick up a few of these. But if you're 
if that ship that you're loading the fury or furies into has the ability to put a person in the turret or fits other actual ships, I think you're better off not being limited. Now, also important to not overstate the abilities of the ships and be aware of the reliance of being hauled around by another craft with jump abilities. I think the idea of the MX is maybe a little more compelling than the base fury as a swarm of missiles or potentially deploying a ship that can kind of be a pest while in combat is an interesting idea. Um, and the payload, payload is significantly more impressive um, if it's used timed effectively, whereas the size two weapons uh, are a little bit lacking against larger targets to support those engagements. You know, if your bigger ship is doing most of the heavy hitting and you're knocking down the shields and then the MX starts deploying all of those missiles, um, I think that makes more sense and provides more value. I would say if you get the base fury, the role is to be a pest and engage smaller targets while your larger ship deals with the other big targets in the area or potentially even just pulling a quick skirmisher from an outpost. I think that's an interesting option as well. Um, but if you're always going to be able to do that, it's probably to be determined because sh that ship is basically just popping up out of nowhere because there's not any clear storage of those facilities, whereas stations, you can almost envision a ship being stored there. Um, overall, the deal isn't terrible just because the price isn't that high, but the return on what you get compared to other fully functioning ships isn't as strong. It's a cool ship, it's a cool concept, um, but I would suggest picking it up in the game. I think it's worth having, I just don't think it's worth spending the money on real and your real money. Instead, I would buy it with UBC. So that's it for now. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned. We're gonna have a couple of, in a couple of days about um, you know the new tank, which is the storm, and then the RSI links we need to cover as well. So videos coming on those. But until then, have yourselves a wonderful day and take care.